Welcome to Ash Wednesday. Welcome to Ash Wednesday. Today is a special day, a moment to pause and reflect and repent and to receive the sign of the cross in ash and on our foreheads. But we can't do that at the moment. Uh, if you haven't got an Ash Wednesday bookmark, you can still collect one uh, in St. Leonard's, uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, do pop in for a moment of private prayer through this week uh, and pick up uh, a prayer. You'll also find when you come here um, our Lent books, uh, our Live Lent and the, uh, the Lent Club bookmark, which gives you the details that you need to see um, uh, for when and how we're meeting as a, as a Zoom book club uh, and what you might want to have read by that stage. Uh, the Art for Lent uh, book, and we'll be talking about some of those, um, and uh, Hannah Steele's Living His Story. So um, do uh, pop in and uh, get one of those. I'm sure we can get them from other places as well. If you only see one left, take it. Uh, we've got one or two others in St. Luke's, um, but it would be a, a, a joy to see that they have all gone. Uh, so today, Ash Wednesday, and tomorrow, uh, we'll be starting our book club. For a moment, let's bow our heads in prayer. Open before you. Rescue us from the chaos of sin, and through the death of your Son, bring us healing and make us whole. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, I am hoping that you have your bookmark. I want you to trace your finger over the cross. It's been painted using palm cross ash. And then make the sign of the cross on your own forehead and say together, I remember that I am dust and to dust I will return. I will turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. Shall we listen to or sing this next hymn? And let's take it as a confession and hear also the undertones of hope.
hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew 6. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the street to be honoured by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you do give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. When you fast, do not look sombre as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. <laughs> Let's just pray together for a moment. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this precious time of Lent. And we just ask at its outset that you would draw us close speak to our hearts fill us with your grace your mercy and your hope that we might draw closer to you and reflect more closely the likeness of your son our lord amen well then lent or quadragesima to give it its lovely latin name just means a 40th but it's an observance in the Christian liturgical calendar that begins today, Ash Wednesday, and then ends six weeks later, just before Easter Sunday. And the purpose of Lent is for the believer to prepare for Easter and to do it through prayer, through penance, through mortifying the flesh, through repentance of sins, almsgiving and self-denial. I am tempted to suggest that if there are those of you that want a little mortifying of the flesh, almsgiving and self-denial, then please form an orderly queue and I'll see what I can do for you. But seriously, we take Lent as the opportunity to modify, if only temporarily, our behaviour. We enter into a time of fasting, a time of new spiritual discipline, and so on. But how should we observe Lent this year? Well, if we just compare the last 10 months with the passage we read this morning, it might raise an ironic grin because it begins, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. Well, chance to be a fine thing. We've been locked up for the past 10 months. And again, Jesus goes on concerning almsgiving. He implores, do it in secret. Again, how else could we have done it in the past 10 months? But even so, we have shown in this place 
great generosity. There has been tremendous financial support for the church when the church's finances have been stretched over the last time. And as we look into the future, they are dwindling in the longer term. And there's been great generosity in sharing gifts and talents in physical and financial resources. But how about prayer? Jesus says, shut yourself in. Have personal time with God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And again, we've had very little choice over that. What about self-denial? We've been living through 10 months of self-denial, denied the company of family, of children, of grandchildren. We've missed on the friendship and fellowship that we would have as a company of believers. Many have been denied of being with their dying loved ones. Many more have not been able to mourn properly. Self-denial has been one of the watchwords, one of the themes of our life in the past 10 months. It's as if we've lived through a 10-month Lent already, not just 40 days, and all this has been done hasn't even been through our own personal choice, but in the main, thrust upon us, compelled by the needs of our wider society. So what's been the outcome? Well, let's have a little look and a, a think and a bit of a reflection. For some, maybe many, being forced indoors has compelled us into God's presence to be alone with just him, with the silence, with a sense of presence that we are not always aware of in the helter-skelter of our previous normal lives. In doing so, there has been a deepening, a broadening of our relationship with God. It's almost as if there's been a renewal, a kind of rebooting of the relationship. And as I talk to people, there is a, a noticeable excitement in those people that have experienced this. And it's been a precious time for those that have used this last lockdown period in this way. Maybe it's because we have come so familiar with our Father, with his Son and the Spirit, that we began to fall into just taking God for granted. In 1970, a singer by the name of Joni Mitchell released a hit single describing the view from her hotel suite in Hawaii, where she happened to be on tour. The song was called Big Yellow Taxi, and it contained the line, and please excuse the grammar, she was American, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone? Maybe we needed the wake-up call to make us fully appreciate what we have. Tragically, there are many who heard God's call back in their teens, had a passion for God through their 20s and even in the 30-somethings. And then it just dissipated. They took their eyes off of Jesus. Joni's song continues, they paved paradise and put up a parking lot. Paradise buried under the necessities or maybe even the preferences of daily life. God is always there, always will be. And both those things are so true. But were we losing the sense of otherness, that sense of presence? Maybe we'd just become a little insensitive to it. Maybe not being able to pray together returned us to praying to and with God. Maybe the loss of our liturgy and the words of man returned us to listening to his voice deep within. Maybe being shut out of our buildings made us aware anew of his presence in our living rooms, our kitchens, our bedrooms and bathrooms. Maybe the absence of vestments and spectacle and trappings has made us more aware and more sensitive towards God himself. Maybe if we hadn't have been afflicted in this way, 
we wouldn't have had the opportunity to consider such things, to reflect and to ponder. Maybe it's part of the answer to the question, why is this happening? Now, God did not do this to us. He didn't send COVID-19. But maybe he's using it to refine, to purify, to teach and strengthen his people. You can look back to the message we heard from Malachi just a few weeks ago. So how then do we observe this Lent? First, may I say that whilst I hold dear and treasure this season, I believe we've been held in a period of Lenten self-denial for so long already. I wouldn't dare tell you not to fast. Neither would I dare to tell you not to deny yourselves, not to engage with new spiritual discipline. But I would ask that you would be gentle with yourself and see Lent 2021 in the context of what has gone before. For there is much that has been sown in the past months and much blessing to be received as a result. I believe there is much hope arising from our recent difficulties. Twice in the reading, Jesus said, then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. You will be blessed. If you have given of your talents and resources, you will be blessed. If you have withdrawn to spend time with God alone. And if you haven't yet felt that blessing, rejoice, for it will arrive. Just look out for that dollop of blessing that is heading your way. An evangelist, Corin and I used to hear in the 70s and 80s, had this wonderful little saying. He said, when you find yourself in the cellar of affliction, look for the wine. And maybe we should start looking for the wine. And when we are freed from lockdown, surely soon, hopefully during Lent, let us not emerge blinking from our homes into the light of society and bring with us saddened, sombre faces etched with the miseries of the past 10 months. Just like the Pharisees when they were fasting. But let us emerge with a new understanding, a new depth of relationship with God, with a new passion, a renewed hope for a future that contains blessing. I would suggest that our faces and demeanour will show how we have used the time over the past months. Have we stored up treasure in heaven? Or have we bemoaned what we've lost? If we have been closeted with our Father, our brother, the in-living spirit, we will have hope in our hearts, born in his presence. And if not, there's still time. We're still locked down, and it's going to be like it for probably another couple of weeks. So take the opportunity. Enter your inner room. Close the door. Open your ears and heart. And have him pour in his love and his grace till there is no more need. This, I suggest, is how to observe Lent this year. Amen. Should we have a moment to pause and pray? And I invite you as you do so to be holding your bookmark, your Ash Cross bookmark. Truly dust we are, and to dust we shall return. And truly yours we are, and to you we shall return. Lord, help this to be a time of turning round and beginning again. Through the 40 days of Lent, help us to follow you and to find you in the discipline of praying and in the virtue of caring. 
in whatever we deny ourselves and in whatever we set ourselves to learn or do. Help us to discover you in our loneliness and in our community. Help us to discover you in our emptiness and in our fulfillment. Help us to discover you in our sadness and in our laughter. Help us to find you when we ourselves are lost. Help us to follow you on the journey to Jerusalem, to the waving palms of the people's hope, all the way to their rejection and to the cross, and to the empty tomb. Help us to perceive new growth amid the ashes of the old. Help us, carrying your cross, to be signs of your kingdom. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord enrich us with his grace and nourish us with his blessing. The Lord defend us in trouble and keep us from all evil. 
the Lord accept our prayers and absolve us from our offences for the sake of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen.